She's a single mother of two, and she lives in an apartment building. Every summer, her children ask her why they can't go to exotic islands over summer vacation, and she can't honestly tell them why they can't. It's because she doesn't have the extra money to take them to exotic islands and do special memorable things. And here's where we come in. I'm Marcus, that's Alec, that's Mark, and that's Kevin, and we're as on others. We aim to solve two major problems. One is ineffective spending on advertising. Many small businesses like ours cannot get a profit, uh, adequate probable return on advertising and get us get probable return on advertising. Our second problem is people struggling to earn money. People like Jessica can't do special memorable things because they can't get the extra money to do so. There are 77.2 million workers around the world, and out of those 77.2, 1.3 million earn this much. That's right, $7.25, and that is not enough. Here's where we're coming. We're ads on autos, and we're a web-based solution to help solve those two problems. We do this by putting business promoting advertisement on local drivers' cars and have them drive around their daily business to promote businesses. We do this, simple, very simple, Businesses come sign up their businesses on our website and we make uh, a design for the sticker and we submit it to a manufacturer and we get it confirmed by the business and we buy ourselves and we apply it onto the driver's cars. There are a couple of driver requirements. One is that drivers have, must be 21 years and older. They must own a car 2005 model or newer and also drive 800 miles or more a month. Some of the driver, some of the customer segments are small businesses like ours that can't get a profitable return on advertising, and also men and women ages 21 years and older that can't make their ends meet with their current profit. So some competition we have. One is uh, in-city taxis. See, the problem with in-city taxis is they require you to buy in bulk of 15 to 30 taxis, usually even more sometimes, and the prices are upwards of $500. Uh, the other one are billboards uh, to uh, cities. Now the problem with billboards to cities is that it's the same drivers driving past them every day. So they're advertising to the same people over and over and over. It's very expensive for them to do something that's not effective. The next thing is city buses. Now the advertisements on city buses are very large. But the problem is they drive the same route every day, uh, running into the same problem as the billboards and showing the same people every day the same advertisement. Next, we have, uh, uh, the reason we are better is because uh, we, the <laughs> four reasons, we have, uh, we're more effective, uh, we target areas such as Barrington instead of large cities like Chicago, we can target smaller towns. Uh, we also, it's easy for the drivers it's simple, it's not hard, it's something that we come out and we put it on their car for them. So, for them it's very easy. And it's a, big, it's a bigger sticker. Now, our money is coming from uh, businesses, well, we're targeting lawyers, uh, law firms, <laughs> law firms, which are lawyers, uh, uh, car rentals, and uh, real estate agents. All right, so as we motion into the financial portion of our model, we have actually two market segments. We have our businesses, which are actually going to buy our service, and then also the drivers, which is our, essentially going to be employees. So as we look at our, at our businesses, we account for all the small businesses in America. And that would be our total addressable market, which is roughly 11 billion, which is a lot of money. So we lessen that down to actually all the small businesses in L1, which is roughly a million two hundred. So we multiply that by them just buying one of our monthly services, which is four hundred dollars, and we came out to number there. And as we look at for the driver section, 250 million, 253 million people in America own a car. But then we looked further at the geographical constraints of like what we are targeting, which is Schaumburg, Elgin. Uh, Carpentersville, Barrington, and we took those demographics into it and we shrunk, shrunk it down to 168,000 possible drivers for our service. And then we look at our five year model with our financials. As you can see, within the first three years, we are not progressing that much, not much growth. But then as we move into years four and five, this is when we are, are expanding out of our market area and using 
uh, better marketing campaigns and applying TV commercials and other forms of marketing in order to grow at a more rapid rate and really expand to most of the country, which is what we are planning on doing. As for our customer assumptions of year one, we are predicting that 168 drivers will be uh, having a car with a sticker on it within our year one that accounts for 131, 35 people driving with a one month subscription and then 33 people driving with the six month. That is not just saying one company for each driver. A company is able to buy multiple cars, so that does not mean 168 companies. That means roughly 50 companies drive, uh, purchasing more than one driver for either company and obviously continuing. As we look at our costs, this, there's going to be different ones for the one month and also the six month. Both are going to account for the sticker. We purchase our stickers and customize them on Sticker Genius. And that is going to cost us $78.34 to put a sticker on each side of the car. And then we are paying the drivers for the one month $127.50. And the businesses are paying us $400, so we are going to get everything that is left. So that's roughly a 40% uh, return for us. And then as we look at the six month, we are not, we um, are paying the driver more. That is because we only have to pay one month for the sticker. The minute that sticker is on for the first month, we don't have to pay for it again, so it's not a reoccurring cost for us, which means we get to also take the rest of that money, which is obviously more beneficial for us for the six months to sign up. As we look at our SGNA for our company, our marketing and our website maintenance are going to be the main components for us to be successful. We need to have very strong marketing campaigns in order to get more drivers, more businesses in order to sign up for our service, because we don't believe that companies and drivers will be able to stay with us for long, so we have to give marketing campaigns in order to get more people at a more rapid rate. And also website maintenance, so our website stays up because we are going to be primarily a website-based uh, company, and if our website's down, we obviously won't be able to function in the later years. And as for those marketing campaigns that I was speaking of, we are going to be using different techniques for the, our different cust customer segments. For our drivers, we're going to be putting flyers up in parking garages in the areas that we described. So flyers in Elgin, flyers in Schaumburg, and all the other areas I described. And then also social media is a great way to get out to people out there. We all know drivers and also businesses have Instagram, Twitter. They have all those accounts just to get out there and spread their name. So we are going to use that as well to connect with them. And also personal phone calls in order to call those companies and be able to get a connection one-on-one -on -one with them and have a conversation with them and see if they would like to purchase our uh, service. So for our MVP, we ended up going with the concierge style, which is where we really started our company and put it onto our own car, as you can see right here. And so this was to really show like, to drivers that our company was around and to see how many people wanted to partake in it. And so for our validation, we had two segments. We had to validate our drivers, which we ended up after around a month of having our sticker on our car, getting eight calls from drivers who wanted to drive. And then we also have 24 high school drivers, which like it conflicts a little bit with our 21 and older. However, like for example, meatheads, if they want to have like high school drivers, then they would be able to do that. We would make an exception for them. So it's not like totally 21 and older, but just mainly. So 24 drivers generated eight calls. You had 24 people driving around with this. Oh sticker. no, we had one driver, which was actually his dad. And so that ended up generating eight calls, and then we interviewed 24 yeah, high school students who wanted to do it. From, but from what type of segment call they were students? They were the 20, they were the 21 and older. The eight calls, yeah. like these are two different things. Okay. The eight calls were 21 and older, and then the 24 was just us talking to people around the high school trying oh, to Oh, okay. That not generated from the student. No, no. Okay, yeah, that, okay. That was, yeah. that was just word of mouth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so then we also had to validate our businesses. And so we started with a really like bad form of like calling people. We really weren't very good at it. However, we then had a unit that addressed that. And after that, we ended up getting out of eight calls one meeting. However, they did not want our, uh, our product, but we really think that once we get our first company, that we'll really be able to start getting more and more as our company gets out there. We also really are going to start our advertising once we start our company, and we think that that will help to get a lot more businesses involved as well. And so how much is this all going to cost? For our advertising for our startup, it's, we're going to need around $4,300. We're also going to need a website, which we're estimating to cost around $6,000. Then we need to trademark our name, which will cost around $235. And that leaves us with a cushion 
of $4,465 just in case like we don't meet our mark and we need a little bit of extra money to keep going. And so that's a grand total of $15,000 and for $15,000 we're willing to give you 10% of our company and by our financial model that would be an internal rate of return of 56.1% and then a money multiple of 3.5 times greater, which will give you around $52,000 at the end of our company, which we plan on selling in year three to either Lyft or Uber so that they can incorporate it with their drivers. Yeah, so as we look at our company, we are at the hump of our company. We're at the top of the hill. We're right there. All we need is that first company, and from there we are able to go super fast and keep things going. It's more of a fact of validation. We just need that one company to keep us, and when everyone sees that it works, we are able to keep going with that, and that's just where we're at right now. I believe all of us are really excited to keep doing what we're doing right now. We love this class. We love what we learned, and we're so excited to keep going with this, and it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you for listening to us today. We're at Zahra Thank you. direct phone calls. So we go through a list of people and try to have a direct phone call with them and also email listings, send them out emails and stuff like that, trying to get more of a connection. It's very hard when we're kids to have a connection with a company, obviously, especially in such a serious market as marketing. So what we're aiming to do is having a better connection with them on the phone calls and really talk with them one-on-one -on -one and hopefully scheduling meetings and continually showing them how this can actually help their business. Have you given any thought to how you're going to identify those small business companies and get their contact information? Like where are you going to get the list of names and phone numbers to actually call? Well, I'm, we actually just search it on Google. Uh, we look for companies that fit our demographic. Okay. So what we will do is we'll look at like popular areas such as like South Barrington, the Arboretum, or in town within here. And we look at the listing of like what companies they have and we see what really like fits up with what we think we're able to get. And so that just is how we kind of do it. Real estate agents, car rentals, oh, right. and yeah, lawyers. lawyers. Yes. How come you pick those segments? That's an interesting... Uh... When you uh, go around driving, I'm sure you'll do that. Um, you really, when you're looking at billboards, like more like the local area ones, I know I live in Fox River Grove and I drive by uh, something Fresco, she's a real estate agent. Like, I just see them trying to get their name out there all the time. They're individual people and they're in a really like big field and they need that like advertising to set themselves apart from all the other well, people. What do you charge? 400 bucks? Yes, sir. For a one. month? Uh, 400 for one month and then 300 for the six months. Have you, have you, um, I love the Twitter, the, uh, the Lyft and the Uber thing. Have you, I know it's dangerous to even think about doing it, but have you contacted uh, Lyft or Uber and asked them about what the house would be relative to, uh, you know, advertising on models? So like talking to them about like our idea and stuff like that. Yeah, and then that's kind of dangerous. Yeah, yeah. No, we were thinking about that, but when we came to it, we were like, what's stopping them from just hanging out the phone and doing that exactly. idea themselves? Yeah. So we exactly. really never got to that point. Too bad there's no way you could get to the drivers themselves because they're obviously already driving an auto for cash. Yeah, we did interview Uber drivers actually, and they said this would just be an awesome thing just to add on top of the money that they're already making. Yeah. And they don't even have to go online or offline, I think is the term for Uber, because you know how you, like, you make money or you don't make money based on if you're available or not. Like this is just a constant thing. You don't have to go out of, out of your way. It's just you drive on your daily routine and you keep making money. One thing that's also promising is for our with our meeting, we actually met up with uh, Mimi Burke, who's a local real estate agent, and so she actually said that she like knew like a lot of people that she might want to like yeah. introduce us to that, because she doesn't really like putting her face on things, and that was her big problem with our company is that she didn't want to put like her face on. She only really got her face on about ten thousand. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, now she's, now she's, now she's, now she's, now she's yeah. concerned. <laughs> so what happens when you hit sixty? Oh. <laughs> Connor, I'll give you $100. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, but this is a great idea, you guys. It's really good. And you're playing off a couple things. One is, you've probably all heard of the gig economy. This is totally in the, in the zone of the gig economy of how to monetize your stuff. In this case, your time in your car. Uh, there's a few things in your math that I'm not sure are totally right. Like you said, 72.2 million workers in the world. And that must have been a, there's 150 million in the US alone. Uh, so I, I want you to make sure you get tighter with that. But the concept is right. I mean, there's a lot of low income of uh, people that want to make more money. And this is a great, a great way to do it. And the one thing that you haven't been able to prove out is to get a customer. Yeah. Uh, what did you learn from these eight calls? So it sounds like this. You made a bunch of dials that resulted in eight conversations that netted one meeting. Is that? Yes. And so so okay. did you learn anything from the number of times it takes just to get somebody on the phone? Uh, or did you only dial eight t different times and finally got one person on the phone? No, we actually called 38 times, and so like the first 30 were like bad calls. And okay, like 38 times, and you got to the decision maker eight times. By the way, that's yeah. the sales funnel. That's the way it works. That's actually pretty good. 38 to what? Yeah, 20% connect rate. That's good. Normal. It's uh, a lot of work. What, yeah. what did those seven people that didn't get in the meeting tell you? Um, those were mainly uh, law firms, and we realized with people who are involved in that, they don't have a lot of time. Obviously, they and, charge a lot. Yeah, yeah, and they do. They charge a lot for the time. It's like we take up like five minutes. That's money that they can be making. So it was more of like I don't want to say that they didn't have time for it, but it was very hard to like get that connection with them when they were so rushed. It would be a lot easier if we were able to meet with them and sit down, which is what we're looking for with these companies to actually explain our service to them more and explain to them how we can make them better from all the other law firms and real estate agencies in the area and how we can like affect the company in a better way. But it's just very hard to get out on a phone call. But that's the only way we'd be able to get that. So one, one tactic that I haven't seen that you guys could use is to make a presentation at the Realtor Association. I mean they have an association here locally like you know that all you know like Remax Realtors get together for yeah. meetings. There's also the better you know the Chamber of Commerce and and other kind of business associations where you can make a presentation on your product to a whole group of people. So you have the one-on-one -on -one and then have the, you know, hopefully collect a lot of leads there. But you, the name of your game is lead generation. To, for people that pay, the drivers will be easier to get. Yeah. Uh, could you go to the page where you show how you're uh, installing? What, how are you installing that? Yeah, that was it looks like you were using some hair dryer. Oh, um, that was just, uh, actually it was a rainy day out, that, that's why I was using the air dryer. <laughs> that was just so like molded on better. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it magnetic? Is it? No, no, it's, it's not magnetic, it's actually a uh, vinyl Static. detail. Okay. Yeah, so it's very easy to take off, um, and I'm just, I can put it on by so myself. So it doesn't damage it? No, it does not damage it at all. But if like they try and take it off, like they won't be able to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's going to tear apart. Yeah, I was going to say, so, if someone will take your money and just take that off, and you have to plow over that. Why don't you put it on one car? Oh, well, we put it on two actually. The the Lexus and then also the Honda van. And those were both of my parents' cars, and they were driving around advertising for us. We were saving the money for um, someone else to drive for us, but obviously we weren't able to generate that business. So it kind of just ended up us not using it. We you weren't, to, you weren't able to generate what business? We weren't able to generate our business to use our service yet. Oh, so you, yeah. yeah, that's why you drove. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you want to drive for us, yeah. which was clever. Uh, and one thing that we also want to do too is like make another round of these stickers, but aim more towards businesses. Yeah, so like kind of have Yeah, but right. If we like put like a advertise here, like that would probably reach a lot more companies. Good. Your company here. I mean, that's the classic. Exactly. Yeah. When did you call? When did you find time to call these do these cold calls to thirty eight different companies? Uh, this was all during classwork, and we were, were going to the individual rooms, and then we were calling around this time. And obviously, that actually wasn't very good for one of our initial customer so, I mean, so Take us through your script. What did that, what did that sound like? So I'd start off with, hi, my name is Mark Tiori. I would like to talk to you before, if I can get like some of your time to talk to you about a great business opportunity that we have for you guys, and that would help you in your marketing campaigns. And then we talked about, and then if they said yes, we would, we would talk about there's a common problem and stuff like that. 
And then I introduced, like, I would say, we have a solution. If we could schedule a meeting and talk to you more about this. We didn't really introduce our company and try and explain to it to them on the phone a lot because we would do that further in the meeting. Mm -hmm. But we just wanted to tell them the gist of what was going on to see if they were actually interested. Because having a call and just give a business pitch to everyone. Do you all do these calls? Or yes. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, so, and uh, before you even did, I mean, the person that decides this isn't usually the person that answers the phone. Yeah, that's we what we were So how did you even about. get to the person that decides about advertising? Well, we would, actually for the law firms and the real estate agencies, it was actually usually the person's personal cell phone that we were able to get to. But when we were calling out like, so like restaurants and stuff like that, we had, we had to ask for like managers or owners of the place, the people who were actually in charge of the money and then have a conversation with them. And we ran into a lot of like leave a message here and stuff like that, but that was just something that kept on happening. Mm -hmm. Any guerrilla marketing ideas for your product? We had, yeah, you want to say it? <laughs> I, I thought of putting our advertisement on like a billboard saying, like, don't advertise here, call it's like, us. Like, we're paying for this, and it's like super expensive, so instead of having to pay for that, you can pay yeah. for us. What about, what about getting Mimi's picture, an ad on a car, and you know, or a realtor and driving it, you know, past their houses, you know, or their place yeah. of business, and so, so they could see One themselves minute. on the cars, yeah. you know, yeah. and say, you know, call me, call me if you, you know, want me to continue advertising for you. Yeah, yeah. Where's and left with me? Oh, um, yeah. um, she was, she's still talking to her, her it's been a couple of weeks, and she's talking to her uh, graphic designer, because she actually has a person done for her, she doesn't do her own uh, advertising, and she was, we're talking to her to like, collaborate to see if this actually does fit into her marketing and what she actually would like to use the service. And she's talking with the graphic designer to like, draw the mock-up design and see like how it would look on a car or something like that, just to see like how this would work. Do you have a follow-up with her? No, not yet. We're going to come yeah. I would encourage you to uh, perhaps reach out to her with a, a sweetening the deal a little bit by by making it cheaper and just tell her, hey. You know, I'm just going to give you full disclosure here. We, we want a customer, you'd be our first one. This would be a big advantage to you because you'd be the only car known in there. And yeah. It'd be a big advantage to us to, to pitch into investors and we really need a customer. Yeah, that was actually one of our um, later ideas when we realized that maybe this wasn't working so well. We were thinking, just have them cover the cost of the stickers, not have to pay the drivers at all, not have to pay us at all, just to like get that validation and say that we've done work with like Mimi Burke or other companies so, like that. One one successful tactic is that you're, and I've done this and it worked, if you segment your uh, your lawyer, your realtor, and I forget your third one. Uh, uh, Trent, oh, yeah, yeah Connor. Pick the most influential person in that segment, and Mimi is certainly in, 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 of the Barrington Realtor, she's very influential. Yeah. Then what you do, so you can give it to them for free, basically your yeah, cost. Exactly. Yeah. So they're out there in multiple cars, not just one. It's got to be seen a lot. Mm -hmm. So now you're 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 using influencers in your segment. Now you can go in your sales calls and say, we're handling advertising for, you know, this influential person in your segment, and would you like, you know, and and we'd like to talk to you about offering the same, you know, offering you a deal. Yeah. You know, and that's a influencer. Influencer marketing is very powerful yeah. in a small. How did you area. get to the point where you had 168 drivers, I think, last winter, and you you assumed that companies would use three cars per company or, or something along those lines? Okay, yeah, um, yeah. So with our like one month assumptions, we're assuming to have like two to three companies by then. This is like what I was talking about with like just getting over that hump and like seeing like letting us grow out there, like as you were talking about, like just not having to pay a lot for it, but just to show that we've done business with like big names and two to three companies. And we learned from actually talking with Mimi, one car is not going to be very effective, especially you want multiple, like four to five. Exactly. So that's what we learned from talking with her is that a person is not going to buy just one single car, which is why we went to the more bulk buying aspect of our company and would lower the price accordingly based on how many they were buying. Great. Thank you. Good job.